All right, well, welcome everybody. My name is David Bush, and tonight I get a chance to be your moderator and host. We have got uh, an amazing presentation for you. Uh, I've had a chance to uh, really dig down deep in uh, my own personal experience and the testimonials of other people and uh, come up with the, uh, the common myths about weight loss and about transitioning and about weight maintenance. Uh, we've also got some really good information about um, how to make some healthy choices after you have transitioned and lost your weight to help you to optimize your health. And so we're excited that you're with us tonight. Uh, we do have uh, a lot of different people on the line. We've got a mix of health coaches, health clients, health professionals, and uh, no matter where you are in your journey, you will benefit from our program tonight. You're going to get a chance to learn a lot about weight loss, but you're also going to learn about that next phase of transition as you hit your goal weight and you begin to transition to eating more healthy natural foods and less of the portion controlled meal replacements, and then how to go about optimizing your health. And we're going to reference Dr. Anderson's Habits of Health book. If you've not purchased this resource or you've not dug into it, um, don't worry. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to learn a lot and then maybe it'll draw you into the book and uh, we'll give some great references to where you can find some information that'll really help you uh, accelerate your journey. My quick story is uh, seven years ago, I ended up starting the program, um, overweight and out of shape as you can see from the picture. And uh, I was a pretty motivated guy. I wanted to do the program, but um, I really didn't know what to do after I lost the weight because I had lost weight before, as many, of you, as many of you have as well. But what I loved about this idea of Take Shape for Life is that it was more than just a weight loss program. And so I, uh, I just started the program, followed through with the five-in-one plan, and then I was able to find uh, great success in losing 100 pounds in six months. That's uh, my story. Um, my personal journey was transformational and it inspired me to want to share that with other people. Since then, uh, seven, almost yeah, full seven years now, uh, I've coached about 700 people through the program personally and I've coached a lot of other people to coach people through the program. So I've seen a lot of the bumps and obstacles along the way and I've seen some people that have fallen short of their goal, people that have quit too early and people that have uh, plateaued. So we're going to share a little bit um, about some of those tips and tools. So um, join me here as we uh, jump into tonight's presentation. Uh, tonight I have a special guest. Alexandra Miller is a registered dietitian and she is the corporate dietitian with Take Shape for Life, one of many if you call the nutrition support line. And uh, she's got a, a great uh, background in history and uh, understanding how uh, the body uh, processes food and uh, nourishes itself. Uh, she has um, got her bachelor's degree in science and nutrition and dietetics from Messiah College. She completed her dietetic internship at the Penn State Hershey Medical Center, and she currently is working on her Master's of Science in Food and Nutrition at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Alexandra has also received her Level 1 and Level 2 Certificate of Training in Adult Weight Management and is also a personal, uh, certified personal fitness instructor. So when you call in to nutrition support, just know that you don't have this um, random person on the other line you have this amazing person who's very vibrant and very passionate about helping you to achieve your goals. And I'm excited about having her here tonight. Uh, Alexandra, if you've put yourself on mute, come off of mute and uh, say hello to everybody. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the call. I'm looking forward to a great presentation. And thank you for the wonderful intro, David. You're welcome. Well, tonight we're going to jump right into it because we only have 30 minutes and we want to talk a little bit more about the path to optimal health. This is from Dr. Ray's book. And it shows the four phases of our program. So if you would join this program and you thought you joined Take Shape for the Wedding or Take Shape for Summer or Take Shape for the Cruise, um, you were mistaken. And that was kind of like all of us. All of us maybe started with an idea that we're going to lose weight or get rid of a problem. But this program helps you to really understand how to create optimal health in your life. And this, um, this little graph may be a little deceiving to some of you um, because it seems so simple. But I'd like for Alexander just to talk a little bit about the green lines and the red lines and just about the idea about turning this into a lifestyle uh, versus just treating it as a, a weight loss process. Alexander? Absolutely. So we start, you know, with the weight loss phase where we create this caloric deficit and we're having 800 to 1,000 calories on the five in one plan and 80 to 100 grams of carbs. So that caloric deficit drives that weight loss. There's science behind that. And it's not just about creating the caloric deficit. It's about nourishing your body while you do that. 
with vitamins and minerals, which we get from those portion controlled meal replacements, as well as adequate protein, which we get from those portion controlled meal replacements that help preserve lean muscle mass. So we keep our metabolic rate high, but yet drive that fat loss. And that caloric deficit coupled with the carbohydrate control of 80 to 100 grams of carb a day is what drives that fat burning state. We kept saying TV and I kept saying computer. Hold on a second. We got somebody who's talking out of turn here. Uh, we need everybody to mute their lines. So hold on. Let me get somebody muted here. All right. You might have to unmute yourself again, Alexandra. I apologize about that. Okay, so as I was saying, you know, and we have this fat burning state where we really tap into our fat stores and we bring that weight loss. So energy in is going to send the energy out. And hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on just one second. We're going to have to lock the mute here because we're having problems with people unmuting themselves. So let me go ahead and uh, I'll unmute you here. All right, now we're ready to go. Sorry about that, Alexander. <laughs> That's okay. So in that phase one, you can see that the energy in is less than the energy out that's driving the weight loss. But then in phase two, we start transitioning into the equal equilibration phase. And this is so important because, you know, you've been in that caloric deficit. It's important to, as you increase your energy expenditure, increase your caloric intake. So you can keep moving through the phases towards optimal health. And we're going to talk more about that as we go along. But I know I've talked to a lot of people who are scared and have fears about transition, but we're going to emphasize how important that is to allow your body to adjust, to bring up that calorie and carbohydrate intake to reach um, phase two. Yeah, and a lot of people make the, uh, make the mistake or they just, you know, jump off of the uh, weight loss program, uh, weight loss phase of the program, whether they're doing the five and one or they're doing a four and two. And they just think that they can kind of make that shift on their own. They don't follow that transition plan as it's uh, described inside the quick start guide and inside of Dr. A's Habits of Health, chapter 12 of the um, Habits of Health book. Talk a little bit more about the importance about really understanding that transition process. Absolutely. So there's a couple things of why it's so important. First of all, your digestive system hasn't been having certain foods and in of those foods, you know, high amounts of those foods. So you want to allow your body to adjust your digestive system to adjust to dairy to fruits and some of those food groups. So that's really important. The other thing is you've depleted your glycogen stores when you're in fat burning. And so you want to slowly bring your body out of the fat burning state. If you do it all at once, your body is going to feel overloaded with calories and carbs and it's going to store it. You're going to probably gain a lot more weight than feel really guilty about that. And then, you know, we get into this yo-yo effect where we're back on and off because it wasn't um, you didn't transition properly in the first place. So if we do it slowly, it allows our body and our metabolism to slowly increase and build up as we go, as opposed to just skipping it and then overloading the body all at once. Um, so, you know, again, allowing your body to digest from a digestive standpoint, from that physical standpoint of bringing out yourself out of fat burning, and also from a mental standpoint, you're learning what these food groups are, what proper portion sizes are. You're slowly incorporating them so that you're, you can adjust with your lifestyle. So there's so many reasons why the transition phase is really important. That's great. And I do know that from personal experience that a lot of times people come out and they don't transition correctly. And then they see that, you know, quick weight gain because they've taken in excess carbohydrates, sodium, fats, sugar, mm -hmm. and that ends up showing up in their, in their weight. And then they think, well, I, if I just, am I, if I'm going to gain weight that fast, does this program even work? Talk a little bit more about addressing that myth. Absolutely. So, you know, as I said, you know, when you are replenishing the glycogen, glycogen stores and you're coming out of fat burning, part of that is going to have some water that's involved. So there's water that pairs with the stored glucose. And, you know, if you're overloading your body with a bunch of carbs at once, you're going to be getting not only more calories, but also this water weight. And so it is going to feel like you're bloated. You're going to see weight gain. You're not going to feel good. Whereas if you take that slow, gradual approach, like I said, your body's going to adjust. Your metabolism is going to be ready to take on just those little increments of extra fuel. 
And so I think, um, you know, to prevent that fatigued feeling, that bloated feeling, it's so important to just slowly increase and not do it all at once. On the flip side too, it's important not to stay on the opposite end and continue to be in a major caloric deficit because that can slow the metabolism down too. If you don't have enough fat stores to support the fat burning state, then your body starts conserving energy. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. You don't want to stay on one end and you don't want to go to the other in extremes. You want to slowly build up to equilibrium. Right. And a lot of people think that, you know, they've had so much success, uh, you know, they've struggled with their weight for so long, they see this amazing success in terms of their weight loss. And now they have that fear that they can't ever stop the five and one or they're going to gain weight. And what Alexandra is explaining is that she's basically trying to give you the confidence that if you do it right and you transition out of the weight loss uh, phase correctly, you can maintain and sustain that weight loss. But you do need to follow the guidelines that have been laid out. You know, if all else fails, go back and read the instructions, right, Alexandra? Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't stress it enough. You know, being on the five in one plan forever, like I said, when you don't have those fat stores and just with life in general is not going to be sustainable. So you really need to, to bring yourself out of that to achieve optimal health and continue on that journey. Right. So on the weight loss plan, you're taking in about 800 to 1200 calories if you're on the five in one plan. And then as you start to graduate that up, you're going to start wanting to not just consume the five in one, but you're going to want to start consuming the habits of health and attending these calls and really learning from your coach how to take those next steps. Your, your coach may not have all the answers, but your coach has all the resources. And if you just simply plug into your coach, they can help you to not only reach your healthy weight, but transition effectively and then go into the process of learning the habits of health. And maybe Alexander, this would be a good time to just talk about the importance about what people are consuming in terms of um, healthy resources and education so that they can really learn how to eat right, portion control, and those types of things. Absolutely. So, you know, obviously we talked about the importance of Dr. A's Habits of Health book, providing a lot of great resources for how to balance your plate, how to choose low glycemic foods, how to get proper portions. So that's a great resource. And I can't stress enough how important our health coaches are. There's a lot of research behind having a supportive community and the effectiveness that that has uh, in maintaining a weight loss. And, and achieving health throughout life. So staying connected with your coach, even when you've, you've done lo- you're done losing weight, that's not the end. You continue to maintain that relationship. And one of the things that I love about Take Shape for Life is you have the opportunity you know, to become a health coach. And then you have people who are looking up to you for accountability as a role model. You're surrounding yourself with people who have the same values and goals as you do. So it's almost like you're creating an even bigger supportive community. So that community, Dr. A's Habits of Health, and also I want to emphasize nutrition support. We are here for you. So, you know, not just during weight loss, but as you're continuing on on your journey in optimal health, whenever you have questions about your meal plans, about what to look for on labels, about recipes, you know, we're here to support you. So please take advantage of those resources. Yeah, when I first became a health coach, um, I, well, when they asked me if I wanted to become a health coach, because I had done well in the program, but I wasn't at my healthy goal weight yet. And I had some concepts about the idea about being a role model and being in a position of leadership, because I didn't know what I didn't know. And I didn't have the information that I thought I needed to give to people. And then my coach really helped me to break down those concepts and those myths that I was holding on to and sharing with me that Dr. A was really the Uh, the person that was supposed to lead the person through the program, the coach was just there to encourage them and to plug them into experts, um, you know, like Alexandra and so many others that are part of our virtual clinic and our bio network of success inside the optimal health community. And so it's just one of those things that if you don't truly tap into it, you'll never know the power of it. So make sure that you, uh, you know, open up to chapter 12 of the Habits of Health and obviously any chapter of the Habits of Health, but specifically in the transition to maintenance um, chapter, uh, chapter 12. And then put a call into nutrition support. Some of you are putting questions in the chat that are great questions, but they're really personalized. And so I don't know if we can end up to get to all of those tonight. Um, So leverage uh, the nutrition support line, contact your health coach to get that number and they will help you to get personalized answers. Uh, We have a question from uh, Craig. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the, the, the mute line here. Hold on just one second, Craig. I had to mute the lines. Go ahead. 
Hold on. Let me see if I can unmute you. There we go. All right, we're good. Yeah, I, I was curious. Uh, thanks, David, by the way. It's a great call. I love 160 people on here tonight. That's so exciting. What I was curious as far as we, um, when you're on the 5 and one it seems like there's a lot of coaching going on. And when people get to transition or afterwards, it seems like that's almost when coaching is even more – needed because you're going into the land of a lot more opportunity. And so could you talk to us a little bit about what it looks like um, as you're preparing for transition and life after transition? Great question, Craig. Alexander, you want to take that one? Absolutely. So I think, you know, part of it is continuing, like we've said, to engage in Dr. A's Habits of Health book because he does address some of those things. So I always point, you know, clients and coaches back to that and, and to read that and really absorb that information. And then, uh, you know, tapping into some of the tips that he gives, you know, obviously you want to prepare yourself with a good eating plan. And that's why we provide the three and three optimal health plan that has the optimal health bar shakes and smoothies and gives you guidelines in terms of what your daily calorie needs. So that's a great starting point, but that's not just it. You know, it's continued use of meal replacements as a tool. It's continued use of support tools like the nurses call, the habits of health call, uh, you know, nutrition support. I love when I hear from people during the um, three and three phase and they're doing the three and three plan because you're right. There's so many new foods and food groups and questions. So that's a great time to contact us. We love that. Um, continuing to maintain that relationship with a coach, being a coach yourself. So I think, you know, looking too at the other habits of health, like sleep and mind and those areas, and really just looking at it as a whole picture and striving to move forward and just right. continuing those habits, those habits you've been doing with just a lot of little slight tweaks. <laughs> yeah. And that's why, you know, going back to the name, it's called take shape for life. It's not take shape for, or not weight loss coaches. That's not what we do. Our coaches are there to guide you throughout all different phases of the program. But oftentimes if you don't have a goal beyond weight loss, if you haven't really sat back and thought about what an optimal life would look like for you and maybe another goal that you could pursue, Oftentimes, you don't feel the need for a coach. So one of the best things that you can do before you reach your goal weight is to set a new goal so that you keep that structural tension. And maybe you haven't read structural tension, but in chapter three and four of the Habits of Health book, Dr. A lays out this idea of understanding that, hey, you need to move towards a desired outcome because if you're just simply trying to resolve a problem, you're likely going to yo-yo. And even though we have people that come into our program that want to take shape for life, oftentimes they just try to resolve a problem of being overweight, and that causes them to yo-yo. They lose the weight, and then they get their focus taken off of where they were going, and then they end up putting some pounds back on. And maybe you can talk a little bit more about just the, the yo-yoing effect mm -hmm. and the mental game that it plays on uh, people that do that. Absolutely. So what I find is that, you know, we have these these times where we go off plan or we're not eating, you know, perfectly. That's normal. We're human. Um, but then we can get into this cycle of where we binge and we overeat. We feel terrible from a physical standpoint. We feel tired. We maybe have a food coma, you know, we're feeling bloated. We've gained weight. So physically we feel not very good. And then also mentally, it really can wear you down. You know, you feel feelings of failure and fear of going back to old habits permanently you know you have those lapses and then what happens is then we go into periods of real extreme restriction that can only be maintained so long and then we kind of continue the cycle of binge guilt restrict binge guilt restrict and certainly there is a point you know with weight loss where you want to get to that healthy weight and you do have some restriction but it's not meant to be something that's not respected you know you don't um, want to be yo-yoing back and forth you want to respect your body accept that lapses are are common but that it's not black or white it's not all or nothing it's about getting right back on track getting connected identifying your red flags and addressing them on an individual basis so that you can move forward you know, for long-term health. Right. Uh, one of the big, uh, best little uh, acronyms that I found is this B-SLIM acronym that Dr. Anderson created um, as a way to teach people the six fundamental behaviors that people that have lost over 40 pounds and maintain their body weight using a variety of different programs have said are common in their life. And if you cannot repeat the B-SLIM lifestyle by memory, I'm going to tell you, based on my experience, you're likely going to gain weight back. 
Um, just because these six fundamental behaviors need to be part of your waking and your life. Uh, and if you have not memorized them and you're not mastering these basic fundamental habits to maintain a healthy body weight, you're likely going to put weight back on. So Dr. Anderson likes to ask the question quite often, if you could achieve optimal health, would you want it? And maybe you haven't asked yourself that question. Maybe that's been something that you've just set off to the side. You've been so tunnel vision on trying to get rid of that problem and get rid of that weight that you've never taken the time to step back and to really think about what optimal health would look like for you. And that's just as simple as taking out a sheet of paper and just writing down the words be, do, and have. At the very top of the sheet of paper, just write out what would life look like a year from now? What would you want to be? What would you want to do? What would you want to have? When you begin to think about what an optimal life would look like for you, then you can actually understand the concept of an optimization plan, which is what phase three of our program is. And that's not just about eating. It's about thinking, eating, exercising, sleep, support, stress management, antioxidants. It's all about the idea of taking health and life to that next level. And I want you to touch on this briefly, and then I want to get to some of the um, healthy choices here, Alexandra. Yeah, I agree. I can't emphasize enough that it is a journey. It's a lifestyle. And so those habits that you were doing when you were in the weight loss phase, they just carry over. You're still eating small, frequent meals. You're still drinking your 64 ounces of plain water. You're still looking for balanced meals and using meal replacements as a tool. But you're also continuing to move forward with new goals, just like David said, and really focusing too on things like exercise. You know, we know that's so important for preventing weight regain and sleep and some of these other areas. So absolutely, I think it's more than just eating, it's the whole picture and continuing to set goals. Well, and Craig already <laughs> talked about the idea about the not having a need for ongoing support, but in chapter 18 of Dr. A's Habits of Health, he gives this little uh, triangular uh, visual where he has healthy eating at the top, healthy motion on the left, and healthy sleep on the right. And in the very middle is support. And if you're not uh, filling that spot with uh, good quality support, and that includes a variety of different resources, it's Dr. A's Habits of Health, it's talking to your health coach on a periodic basis. I never like to have a client um, not have a next follow-up date, even if it's just you know a month away. Having a date that somebody can check in on you and just basically hold you accountable. Stephen Covey, the famous author, said, accountability breeds responsibility. And if you have a person in your life that cares about you, that's calling in on you, even just a voicemail to check in on you, that can be enough to bring you back into a healthy, healthy lifestyle, or maybe it can just be a reminder to be on point. There's all kinds of online tools and resources, and then there's the idea of creating a peer support system. And Alexander, is there anything that you'd like to say just in terms of helping people to plug in that we haven't covered already? I think we've covered it all. I just can't emphasize that the research supports this, that having a health coach using these support things are going to make a huge impact in your healthy behaviors and being able to maintain them long term. So I think we've got it, David. Great. Well, another common myth is the idea of uh, not needing special food anymore. And, you know, our products are an amazing tool to help people to lose weight. Uh, but maybe talk a little bit more about the design of the food, because some people think of them as being this diet, package, processed food. But I want you to talk a little bit more about the nutritional quality and why it's a good resource to continue to use. Absolutely. Well, first, I just want to say that portion controlled meal replacements have been shown to be equally as effective in helping people maintain, uh, you know, prevent weight regain after they've lost it. So we've got research behind that. And with our, you know, portion controlled meal replacements, that's because you're going to be getting a good dose of protein and fiber. So you get that satiety and that feeling of fullness for only 90 to 110 calories. You know, I look at products comparable in the market, and if they have that level of protein and fiber, they're either much higher in calories, uh, or if they're about the same calorie level, they don't have anywhere close to that amount of protein and fiber. So that's really essential, as well as that vitamin and mineral fortification of 24 plus vitamins and minerals. You're getting calcium and vitamin D, but you're also getting vitamin C and iron. And so just that spectrum of nourishment, all for 90 to 110 calories is so unique. So of course that's great for weight loss, but it's such a great tool because um, during the optimal health phase, because if we're realistic, we know that our lives are busy and we still need that nourishment. So that is a great tool to help keep you on track. 
And a lot of times we haven't really learned the habits of health. We don't know the B-SLIM acronym. And so to goof proof our life, we continue to use portion control meal replacements, maybe two, three, four times a day, in addition to healthy natural foods to keep that calorie control until we can learn. If you've perfected bad eating for 20, 30, 40, or 60 years, the idea that you're going to figure it out in six to 12 months is real is unrealistic. And so, you know, a lot of times people say, well, I, you know, I can't afford to stay on the program, but they go and they buy food from restaurants and grocery stores. And those people never call them. They never encourage them. They don't give them access to a nutritionist and the nurse call and a doctor call. And so that's maybe a little bit more, uh, Alexandra, just about the value that they get inside of um, using the meal replacements as a tool versus just trying to find a cheap substitute. Absolutely. You know, as we talked about the nutritional profile, again, you know, you're not going to find pretzels that are pre-portioned with 11 to 15 grams of protein on the market. But like David's saying, it goes so much farther. You have that access to nutrition support, these calls, this community, um, and all the resources online. We have our dining out guide and, and different tools to really help you make successful. So it's much more than just the food. Yeah, well, here's a nutritional breakdown of the peanut butter uh, crunch bar, which is one of our um, portion control meal replacements. Um, I want you to go ahead and just break down some of these key numbers that you've shown to me. Yeah, so protein, 11 grams, 110 calories. Again, that's awesome. You know, if I'm looking at the, gro at the grocery store at protein bars, they're going to be at least 150 calories to get 11 grams of protein, somewhere closer to 200 in many instances, and for only three grams of sugar. When I look at a lot of the protein bars or just bars on the grocery store shelf, um, you know, they're sometimes have more sugar than a candy bar or certainly more than three grams. So getting that amount of protein, but still keeping the sugar low, the carbs are only 13. When I look at labels, I'm seeing a lot in the 25 to 30 range. Um, and then also, you know, keeping those calories in that range because we want to create that energy in equaling energy out to help prevent weight regain. So those really stick out to me. Also just want to mention the dietary fiber because it's the fiber and protein that really promote that satiety. And one of the things that I've learned from the late Brad McDonald was, is that, you know, our products didn't, he didn't want the products to be inside of the major big box stores because they were the gold standard of meal replacements on the market. And they were recommended by over 20,000 doctors. Um, and so maybe talk about, about the 24 vitamins and minerals and just the nutrient support that they're getting. Absolutely. You know, it's hard to make a meal with how fast paced our lives are and get all those nutrients. You know, vitamin D is something that a lot of us are deficient in. Calcium, um, you know, iron and vitamin C, things like that. You're getting it all within 110 calories. So I think that's a pretty unique um, component to the meals and really helps, you know, if that's your breakfast, if you're having that cereal and you're getting all of that plus that protein, you know, you're starting off with a well-balanced meal and you're just not gonna find anything like that on the market. Well, next up, I want you to do a little bit of a comparison between the optimal health products and just maybe give us a quick rundown, the, uh, the items that are listed on the left in the picture, and the uh, chocolate dream bar is the nutrition facts right there in the left-hand side, yes. and then One we've got favorite. this <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite too. But it's being competed against the peanut butter uh, crunch bar, which is a meal replacement, and the Optimal Health product is not. Explain how Optimal Health products are different than portion control meal replacements and when to start using them. Great question. So one of the big differences is you're not going to see that vitamin and mineral fortification. And that was done intentionally uh, because you are and you have been incorporating, you know, more food groups and more of those foods within the food groups. So you don't necessarily need all of the vitamins and minerals. Uh, and so we just put what was naturally occurring in these foods. Um, the calories are a little bit higher, but so is our energy output at this point. So, you know, sometimes that's really helpful, especially as a fueling. I know a lot of times in the optimal health phase, you know, we are increasing our physical activity and a lot of people get to a healthy weight. They want to start training for different events. And so sometimes that extra ca those extra calories are really needed. But one of the really unique features of these uh, bars and smoothies and shakes, the optimal health line, is that the protein is even higher. And again, that's really just to help keep cravings at bay to suppress the hunger, keep you full so that this will carry you through. So I think when you get to, you know, get through transition and you calculate your total energy expenditure, your daily calorie needs, you then want to find your sample meal plan. This is available on the website 
And it'll show you how to integrate the optimal health products in a way that will also help you prevent, you know, weight regain and also move forward with a healthy, balanced meal plan. Yeah, would you talk a little bit about, Heidi has a great question in the chat uh, about the idea of pairing protein and a carb, like a protein, um, like an optimal health product, and then having maybe an apple um, later on in the day. I mean, just talk a little bit more about that protein and carb balancing once you've reached your goal weight. So some people find that, you know, combining the protein with a little bit of carbohydrate helps promote satiety. So you're getting some energy from the carbohydrate. That's what our body prefers as fuel, especially when we're not in fat burning, right? So you want a little bit of that, but you want that protein because it helps slow digestion. It helps keep you full. So in these bars, you know, we have a nice balance of both. Uh, which is nice. And certainly if you pair, you know, you have an apple with a one ounce low fat cheese stick, a small apple, those kinds of combinations can really be healthy feelings that keep you satisfied. Uh, and I also find that that's really also great pre post workout. And I won't get into the world of sports nutrition, but you know, that can really be a good feeling before or after a workout in terms of muscle recovery and energy and performance and things like that. Well, I want to move on to the flavors of home products because many of our clients um, haven't necessarily been awakened to this uh, nice little uh, prepackaged lean and green meal that's a shelf-stable meal. It, all you have to do is just open up the package and throw it in the microwave. And I know that some people have concerns about it, but it's actually really delicious. And talk a little bit more about how it compares to some of those you know, grab-and-go meals like Healthy Choice. Absolutely. So I think we probably all know that if you compare this to a Marie Callender pot pie, we're definitely going to come out on top in terms of calories and carbs and fats and pretty much everything. Even within a healthy choice option, though, um, you know, we still see, you know, similar calories, but look at the carbon protein difference. So in our turkey meatball marinara, you're having 290 calories, 26 grams of protein, and only eight grams of carb and six grams of sugar. With the healthy choice meatball marinara, uh, they're only getting 18 grams of carb, but 30, or excuse me, 18 grams of protein, 39 grams of carbs. So much higher in carbs and not as high in protein. So you're not quite getting that balance you are with our meatball marinara. Great. Next, I, I want to talk a little bit more about the snacks because oftentimes, you know, we do kind of calorie creep with our snacking and we've got some great snacks that people can use on plan and as well as in transition and optimization. Would you talk a little bit more about the nutritional makeup of these fun little snacks? Absolutely. So these snacks are great. You know, you think of things like pretzels and chips at the store and they're very highly processed, lots of ingredients. These are very simple. We're using pea protein in our pea crisps, uh, which is fantastic and a plant-based source of protein, which is very sustainable. And, you know, you're not going to find too many products where you have 70, 50 to 70 calories and six to seven grams of protein. I mean, that's a very satiating snack and they taste delicious. Uh, you have no, things stop, like the time out for saying you de define satiating because a lot of people don't understand what that means. It means it keeps you full. It fills you up. It keeps Boom. you satisfied. There you go. So you don't yeah. feel like you're hungry. So if you eat that 100, 100 calorie pack of Oreos, you may only be taking in 100 calories. But if you take in some, you know, some of the apple cinnamon crisp or the barbecue crisp that have that pea protein, you're actually giving your body what it's actually wanting, which is nourishment rather than just flavor. So it's up to you to decide how much, you know, 100 calories of cookies and carbs that you take in, but you're not really fueling your body uh, uh, with good quality nutrition. Right, Alexandra? Absolutely. You're going to be getting sugar and just carbs, no protein. So I couldn't agree more. All right. We're going to wrap up here with just the antioxidant uh, drinks and the flavor infusers because these are great additives. But sometimes people think that they can just buy things like, you know, the common crystal lights just because it's a flavored water. Talk about the differences between what these are versus the common commercial items. So we have, you know, a couple of options based on what you're looking for. We have antioxidants, which helps uh, prevent cell damage within our body and prevent, which then helps prevent chronic disease. So just an easy way to get an extra dose of antioxidants. Um, if that's something you're looking for, we also have our calorie burn line, which we have research to support that there's a slight metabolic boost with that. And then we have some more of these um, energy infused ones. So when you kind of need that little afternoon pick me up, if that's, if that works for you, you know, getting some B vitamins which help with metabolism, as well as just a little bit of caffeine can sometimes do that, suppress the appetite, give you that little boost of energy. So it just, we have that nice profile of options um, that, you know, with different flavors. Great. Well, in terms of uh, the program, I know that a lot of people think of this as, um, you know, 
products, food. It's about, you know, what we're consuming and what we're doing for exercise. But really what we're doing is we're offering people the opportunity for optimal health in all three aspects of the trilogy, healthy body, healthy mind, and healthy finances. And while tonight we talked a lot about nutrition and a lot of, to- a lot of talk about weight, uh, really the things that oftentimes uh, really cause us to gain our weight back is not because of what we're consuming, but what we're, what, what's consuming us. And it's not necessarily what we're eating, it's what it's eating at us. And so if you feel like uh, there's more to it than just the nutrition and exercise, um, I would strongly encourage you to talk to your health coach, um, contact him for more health tips, get the nutritional support line, plug into the full support of the Optimal Health community, and check out the full program and product offering. You're probably running on 10 to 40% of the program because you probably just haven't taken that time to really learn about the different resources. And I would encourage you to choose to pursue the trilogy of optimal health and live an abundant life. You can get the Dr. A's uh, Optimal Health ebook. It's a free ebook. It's a great resource to help you to explore uh, what some of those other areas that you'd like to maybe improve upon to help you to live more in the trilogy of optimal health versus just getting healthy, skinny, and uh, maybe missing out on some of those other opportunities. So thank you so much, Alexandra. I really appreciate it. I know that there's a whole bunch of people that are super pumped about your expertise being shared tonight. And so uh, thanks so much. Any final parting words for everybody? Just thank you so much for your time tonight. And I saw there are a lot of great questions in the chat that, you know, just email nutrition support, give us a call. We'd be happy to talk with you one-on-one and answer those questions since we didn't have time to tonight. But thank you very much, David. Yeah, just call the uh, Client Support Center and they'll transfer you into nutritional support. So thanks so much, everybody, and have a great night.